part of my job was to help the people and, and work in that post-divestiture environment in the competitive world. Mm -hmm. So one of my claims to fame, which is really useless in terms of anybody understanding today what was going on, but I actually did the first business plan for the post-divestiture environment. So divestiture was January 1, 1984. We, we did the business plan in uh, February of 1982 in order to get a view of the world after divestiture. And so from that position, I had to learn every product and every service that the phone company offers, which was a lot of fun. And then I was involved in new product development, so we were creating new products and trying to figure out whether they would be profitable. And as a result of that, I was always learning about new technology. I was always on the edge of whatever was going on today. I couldn't take a course in order to learn about the new technology because courses had not yet been created. I had to go to the technical people and to the engineers in order to learn what I needed to know. And the, the result of all that was as I was constantly learning a new vocabulary. And then as I was working in new product development, I had to learn about regulation and, and the changes in the law and the changes in the rules of regulation. And then I would be explaining marketing, or marketing people would be explaining to me what they wanted to do. And I got to a point where I realized that in some way I had become multilingual. Mm -hmm. And then when I left the phone company, I went off into the electric utilities because they were also facing deregulation. And I went off as an independent consultant. And as an independent consultant, I was working in new product development and I was doing financial models and business plans and market research. And part of my website, I look at the computer as though it has that website on it, uh, said that I might be the only multilingual person in the room. And people would say, oh, do you speak French? Do you speak Spanish? And I'm going, no, I speak accounting. I speak finance. I speak advertising. I speak legal. I speak HR. I speak systems. I speak statistics. I speak engineering. And each one of these languages is actually a different language. Mm -hmm. And so some of the projects that I would do, and the ones that for me were the most fun, were working with a group of people who all had specific capabilities and were really, really uh, smart about what they knew, but they were not communicating with each other. And so we would be putting together the new product plan or the new product idea and trying to figure out how to get the team to come together and one of the things that I would be doing is I would be listening to the finance person saying whatever the finance person was saying about that's too expensive or this isn't going to work. And I would look at the marketing person and say, do you know what the finance person just told you? And they would just look at me and say no. And I would say, they just told you that the entire marketing plan that you have in mind will cause the product to bleed red ink so you have to rethink it. And the marketing person didn't understand what the finance person was saying. And then the engineer would be talking, and I would turn around to the marketing person, and I don't mean to pick on marketing people. Uh, I'll pick on other industries later, different specialties later. Uh, and I would say, do you know what the engineer has just said to you in terms of the features and the functions that you want for this product? And the marketing person would say, well, he said this, that, whatever. And I would say, well, actually, he told you that what you really want to do and that feature and function that you're defining is contrary to the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. So that's a little bit about my background.